Hey guys, here we go into a video of We Fight How We Train for Terrence Crawford. Now, we're going to be taking a look at his pad work and doing a look at his pad work analysis for the fight for Terrence Crawford. It was from, from a few weeks ago in Fight Hype, and we're going to be taking a look at it. It's, I think it was from the circuit video. And uh, real quick, <clears throat> some of the skills that we're going to be looking for, notice where his weight is on the front foot. He's going to shoot this hook, and he's going to pendulum step around Crawford here, right? Boop. Very, very slight, uh, and then he's gonna wait for him for the uppercut, okay? So we're gonna be looking for pendulum steps and uppercuts, lots and lots of shots, and um, the the video clips that I'm showing here are the same ones from the knockout video I showed from a couple days ago. Again, it's taking a step off the line here, uppercut, taking a step off the line. Now here, he's gonna be pull countering here, and then coming in with an uppercut. And we're gonna be showing some demos of that, and then pivoting on the front foot, now taking a step off the line, finding the uppercut again, and then again, controlling with the right hand, taking a step off the line, making with a hook, and then coming with the uppercut, dropping Porter. <clears throat> and then controlling with the right hand, taking a step off the line, pulling to the back foot, coming with the uppercut. He does miss that shot, but he does shoot an uppercut. Repositions himself again with a little bit of that pendulum motion right there. Boop. And then right back into another combination. Now again, we fight how we train. And he's going to do all of these little moves in his pad work here. Now starting with taking a step off the line, okay? He's gonna shoot a control combo, one, two. Take a step off the line, real simple. But very, very similar motion to when he was stepping off of the line when Sean Porter would pendulum on him so he could set up his uppercuts. And again, one, two, three, right there, just real quick off the line. And then boom, 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 uppercut, controlling with the right hand. And then again, a step off the line, ready to continue setting traps. Now. Pivoting off the front foot, sure. He does that quite a bit a lot uh, against Porter as well. Gets away with it a little more than I think he should, uh, but Sean Porter's a little smaller than him. Now, real quick, one, two, three. And now watch him take that step and pendulum step here. Very, very similar to what he does in the first clip here, right? He is in this position here, and now penduluming this way to get that angle. Very, very slight at the end, but a very, very similar motion. Whoops, did I go so far back? A very, very similar motion, boom, 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 and then penduluming here to set the trap for that right hand there. Now, again, after these motions, looking primarily to start his engagements, again, with uppercuts, right? And he's going to do a lot of that in this routine as well. Boop, boop, boop. Ah, so here we go, practicing the pull counters with the uppercut, right? Control, control, and now his opponent's going to interact with him off the line with an uppercut. Right? So, boom, boom, pull, uppercut, hook. Okay? We're going to take a look at that. Very, very similar motion. But again, off that motion too. Pulling to the back foot, waiting for his opponent to re-engage, right? But he's so much faster than Sean Porter. And so much faster than people give him credit for. People just have no idea how good Sean, uh, Terrence Crawford is. But, um, I mean, you have a little bit of an idea, you guys. But again, here, pull counter, uppercut. Right into that motion. <clears throat> and in the video, he brings his right shoulder to the line by throwing a punch. And this one, he does it by controlling Sean Porter's head to get his head back to, to safety um, on the other side of Sean Porter's head. Now, again, taking a step off the line like he was practicing before. And I want to point out how similar these two motions are. Because now, he has to combine taking a step off the line and pulling his weight to the back foot to find a way to throw this uppercut. So it's a beautiful little routine that he has going on with his coach here, where he gets to separate and practice those ideas and then put them together uh, in the fights, you know. And uh, obviously, we're not going to get to see probably all of his pad work and stuff, uh, but Crawford's a very smart fighter. He knows how to combine his drills, um, and that's what you're looking to do is make your drills as, more, as difficult as possible um, while still being, you know, fight-friendly, right? Now, again, practicing a lot of those pull counters, boom, 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 and then pulling off the line there and a lot of the stepping, right? And then pivoting, very similar. Oh, that's exactly like the video. There we go, that's the one we're looking for. Boom, boom, boom. And then the little pendulum here to the back foot, waiting with the uppercut. Again, practicing a lot of uppercuts after shifting and bringing his weight off the line. Um, but a really, really cool routine, a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, very active, right? A lot of movement, a lot of controlling the line, right? Uh, now. Not as much as you probably want, especially if you're a developing fighter. Um, 
Again, if you're a better fighter and you're fighting and you have a routine like this, you're going to know where you're making mistakes or you need to do this or this. Also, the media's here, okay? So it's not like they're probably going, you know, all out or, you know, I don't give any excuses for your workouts. You always want to be getting the most out of your workouts. And I want to say, especially if you're going to go into a fight fighting Sean Porter, but we fight how we train, right? And because of that, we always want to be doing things as most correctly as possible, okay? Uh, my teacher, uh, real quick story. <laughs> uh, when I was in kindergarten, my teacher, uh, her name was Mrs. Yifong, and she taught me how to use chopsticks. And I thought that was like one of the coolest things ever, but it was really frustrating. I, could, I didn't even know how to use a pencil. And we're learning to use chopsticks. And I thought it was, you know, blowing my mind. Um, and I'm in kindergarten, right? But I remember her telling us that practice makes perfect, right? Practice makes perfect. Um, and then I remember someone had a problem with that. And then eventually she amended it to practice makes better. And uh, she just kept telling me to practice. You know, practice, practice, practice. And you'll get better. Um, and that's how you get better. You just practice. And you drill. And you, it just, you know, and you're going to do things the way that you practice them. Now, um, <laughs> yeah, actually, it was pretty cool, too. Uh, I could pick up a penny when I was, anyway, you guys don't care. Who cares? Whatever. Anyway, uh, thank you, Mrs. Yifung. I appreciate it. Um, uh, but um, now, we fight how we train. No excuses for your training, right? You always going to, you're going to fight how you train. So if you take it relaxed. Uh, so what I want you guys to think in building your own routines is about not having breaks in between your rotations, right? Not having breaks in your pad work. Um, where Having spaces where you're learning to have a fight pace through your pad work. Um, and I think it's really helpful. And that's one of the things, even though he has a lot of moving around, it's a very active routine. Um, uh, it's, that's one of the things that you want to be mindful of you know, when doing your own routines. Uh, so... Um, but we can see that all those skills that he used to actually knock Porter out, stepping off the line, finding his uppercuts, um, uh, the pull counters, and how those kind of moves kind of bleed into each other, as well as the pendulum steps, right? So that he can get the outside angles as well when he was being more offensive, right? And just real quick, you guys, just to show you um, the dichotomy between them, right? Um, pendulum stepping backwards off the line here, right? Taking a step off the line, right? And that's a pendulum step backwards, right? Boom. And then coming with the uppercut. And then you have the aggressive version, the pendulum step forward, right? Where you're coming and getting the angle around him, right? As Crawford is looking to do here, as he starts his engagement here, and looks to kind of pendulum around Porter here, getting that better, better striking angle against his, you know, smaller, you know, slower and, you know, overmatched foe. Um, Again, I thought that this fight was, uh, I guess the way you say it was a mismatch, you know. Um, and uh, once Crawford wanted to turn it on a little bit, um, he was just so much faster and so much more dominant on the line than Porter could be. Um, and Porter couldn't find a safe way to get on the line with him. He couldn't find a safe way to close the distance because we fight how we train. And in all of Sean Porter's videos, his head is always in the same spot when he throws his ones and twos. And... <clears throat> Crawford was able to take advantage of that, as we see here, one, one, two, boom, and coming just straight forward, because he has no other option, right? Boom, right into that shot, right into this shot, coming forward, right into that shot, coming forward, right into this shot. Again, um, a pretty easy night uh, overall, I think, for Terrence Crawford, and as we look back on it, we're going to realize how much more dominant he was over Sean Porter, because um, I think it was really, you know, kind of a, a one-sided beatdown, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I think I gave Sean Porter, if you guys are interested, two rounds for sure. I gave him uh, the third round, which was a pretty close round. Uh, and the fifth round, I thought the fifth round was his best round. Um, but most of the other rounds, I didn't really think that uh, Sean Porter uh, did enough to win them, uh, landing the punches that he was landing. I thought he was eating bigger punches than he was giving. Now, there are other ideas there, uh, like flaws in the scoring system and stuff that you might want to think about or whatever when analyzing a fight like this, and they kind of highlight those ideas too. It's really interesting. But um, maybe I'll talk about it 
a video on scoring and how how I would change scoring if um, if yeah. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys would like uh, help building your training routine, if you guys would like help learning how to shadow box, learning how to get into boxing, learning how to, whatever it is that you want to learn how to do, learning the double end bag, learning how to use the speed bag, you want to learn how to hit the heavy bag like a pro, um, check out my Patreon. I do private coaching. It's 50 bucks to sign up and 50 bucks a month. Uh, and if you join up, I actually just recently started a Discord. So I have a private Discord server where I have all of my fighters that I'm coaching, um, as well as the longtime fighters and uh, coaching uh, fighters that I'm coaching in my black belt boxing program that have actually purchased the uh, the pendulum boxing program um, and you know almost everyone who you know well a lot of people who purchase it wind up wanting the coaching as well and they just they love it so um, it's a really cool place to kind of interact with other people who are training um, and I want you to know that the people who are in the Patreon. For the most part, they take their boxing very seriously, um, just like I do. I'm very critical of people online. Uh, I'm very, very harsh on my own training, my own techniques, and you know, um, it's a place to learn and grow. And uh, it's going to be an interesting community. Right now, I think it's about twenty something people, twenty five people. Um, uh, it's tough getting invites out, and you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, as I just started it a couple days ago, but. Um, uh, there are videos there posted of my workouts so that you guys can see me doing demos and doing seminars. Um, and it kind of has a platform to kind of start you guys with your own heavy bag routines. And you can see my other patrons' heavy bag routines, their double in bag routines, their shadow boxing. Um, and you can see everyone working on the drills and working on the things that I'm teaching in kind of a uh, boxing school kind of work. Um, so it's a pretty cool community, um, and uh, yeah, it's fighters only, okay? So if you're not a fighter, if you're not training, and you're not sending in video, uh, you don't get to be a part of the community. Um, so it's only going to be fighters. It's not going to be uh, creepy old coaches just trying to watch you and look at your video. Um, it's not going to be a bunch of, you know, you know, people trying to steal your stuff. You know, it's going to be people that, um, anyway... It's a cool community. Um, yeah, if you have any, any other questions, uh, also full fight film studies on Patreon. It's ten bucks to sign up, ten bucks a month, and uh, that's also a great place to learn boxing if you want to learn by yourself. Um, I talk about technique. I teach technique. I teach everything I teach um, uh, in film study on there, and you can go back and watch tons and tons of other patrons. Um, you know, sparring and, at, you know, competitions and their training and their heavy bag work and their shadow boxing work and, you know, all kinds of work, you know, all kinds of drills, all kinds of very, very, very unique and interesting things to learn on Patreon. Um, and it's 10 bucks to sign up and 10 bucks a month. And again, I make more content on Patreon than you could possibly consume every month. Okay. It's more content than you guys can possibly consume. You will never, ever finish my library. Ever. There is so much content. And it's only 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. And if you want to sign up for the, the Patreon coaching, okay, you will never run out of drills. I will always have new drills for you. I will always have new things for you to work on. Until you're burnt out because... <laughs> Uh, I've made you work too hard. And that's actually usually what happens. People are like, damn, man, actually, there's a lot of stuff to learn, man. That's crazy. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, all of my Vimeo packages right now with promo code 30 are 30% 30 off. Um, check them out. Uh, I actually just recently added some new shadow boxing videos to the shadow boxing program um, to kind of make it a little bit more complete. Um, and kind of tie some ideas together that I was really hoping to when I first put it together. Um, but um, it's really cool. And again, it's kind of a living document. I think I'm still going to be adding a couple more videos in just about another week or so um, uh, to teach kind of, you know, some more advanced shadow boxing drills and theory and stuff. But it's a really, really cool program. 
And again, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, the only people that are allowed to review it are people who purchased it. Um, so if you want, if you purchase it and you want and you hate it, just leave a review. I'm not going to delete it. Uh, I don't coerce people into to, you know putting reviews. Um, I appreciate them greatly. But um, anyway, let me just guys think in the comments below. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Later.